Hello, welcome back. My name is Alan and um, thank you for joining me again on my channel. What I thought I'd show you today um, was prompted by a couple of comments that I'd had on some of my other videos. And this is really about how you prep 28 mil figures, or how I do anyway, and um, <coughs> some of the sort of tips I have in terms of painting uh, shield designs and the figures in particular. I actually went to the, the lead box and found that I've got 24 figures here, which were a mixture of Gorgon and Wargames Foundry, that I'd set aside to make another uh, unit of Etruscan sort of heavy infantry. They would be a mixture of uh, Italian and Greek influences, but they'll certainly suffice in terms of showing you how to paint similar style troops. And I thought it'd be useful just for the beginner out there to find out how I prep the figures and try and get the best result from painting. So a few tools to mention. I've got a couple of uh, short six inch needle files here. These are permagrit needle files um, and they work really well. I've got a half round and a round. We'll show, uh, see how they get used in a moment. I've got a pair of clippers. Uh, this is for removing flash and sort of like sprues that uh, cut the result from the casting process. And I've got a pair of pliers just for bending arms and uh, general sort of uh, a realignment. I've done most of these figures already. Um, you can see that I've um, filed off the bases and I've done a, a bit of work around them. There's the odd figure in here though that hasn't yet been addressed. This is one of them. What I wanted to show you was that on most of these metal figures, you will get the occasional uh, extra little uh, line there. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. So you can see there that we've got an extra little piece that's come, come from the casting process. What we actually want to do with that is just take the snippers, snip it off, and give it a bit of a, a gentle file. Excuse me. And um, generally what we're looking for are lines that get created inside, and they tend to be inside the figure, where we can remove it. Um, in terms of getting it back to a nice flat finish. You notice as well that we've got a little bit of uh, extra casting on the, on the base. Let's get rid of that. And then we're going to just run around with the half flat just to get that nice and neat. Then you'll see that on the base here we've got some unevenness. So what we're going to do is take that off. And what we're trying to do is get the figure to stand on his own. Uh, now, obviously, you can see that that there is very unstable. And this is where the pliers come in. We start to manipulate the base. And you can bend it quite comfortably um, until we get to a point where we're happy with the, the general sort of ability of the figure to stand on its own. And that's not taking too long in this particular case. Uh, we've also got some lines down the helmet here um, and on the horsehair plume that I want to try and get rid of. I tend to use these permagrit files because they last quite a long time and after a little while they're almost perfect in terms of not being too um, aggressive but also enough that they're actually um, able to do the job. And what I'm doing here is just placing the file inside the open hand because a little bit later we're going to obviously put some a spear in there. I'm just making sure, oops, that we get good. Uh, there's a line there which you may or may not be able to see on the camera. So taking that off, and generally we're going round making sure that we get a nice smooth even finish. Sometimes people use knives, or, um, you know, sharp, a sharp modelling knife. I've never found that particularly satisfactory. I find the best way is to use files. Um, it's a little bit more awkward this way because I've got the camera in front of me. But as I say, the general general idea is, I mean, this figure's not too bad. You will find figures out there that aren't as well cast as this one. This, this happens to be a Gorgon Etruscan figure. I think if I remember rightly this is a second class spearman. 
um, with the hoplite type figures being the more elite troops. So we're going to get to a point where that's suitable for starting the painting process up. Oh, see a little line there. The lines tend to run down the arms and down the sides um, because of the way that the, the mold's created. But once you're happy with the figure, um, we'll, we'll return him to the, to the pile, as it were, with the rest of them. And I think um, there's just one more little guy to do. If I remember rightly, it's this one. Um, now, this one is quite an interesting one. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. We've got a half complete, uh, we've got a bit of extra there that's gone into the handhold or the open hand, sorry. So what we'll be doing with that is getting a needle, sorry, it's getting a small drill bit and a pin vise or a pin drill and uh, opening that up in a moment. Um, probably gonna be a few more of these. There's another one. Now, usually I stick a one mil drill bit into a Dremel and uh, run it that way, but I thought for the purposes of the video, just to explain, we'll do it with a with a small handheld drill. And this is the sort of thing that you want to be using. Um, you tighten fairly easily using the, uh, hit, uh, obviously the, the collet here or the clasp here. Um, these usually have an inner piece, if I undo it, that you swap round. So that obviously gives a, a larger hole. We want it on the smaller version. We want to put a one mil drill bit in. Uh, one mil is about the right sort of size for the average sort of spear and, and a, certainly a metal spear that you'll buy from numerous manufacturers. And the way this works is obviously that there's a it rotates around that rear portion. So all we do is effectively line uh, the drill bit up with the hole that we're trying to drill, move these other guys out of the way. And then we just use the drill. Oh, that's gone fairly well already. Just to go through that uh, little section, I'll use the round file to widen that out. Also to make the definition there. Okay. And then we'll turn it around. The reason I use the Dremel uh, is this would be rotating obviously at high speed and you can tend to get into the uh, hand uh, in a little bit easier. You just have to go careful that obviously you're using it in an appropriate way and you don't catch yourself. Um, and obviously Dremel's not the only tool out there. I'm just talking about a small multi-tool really. Um, here's another one. Sometimes you'll go through the entire uh, sort of extra casting bit like that. And then you'll see that you've got a sort of natural hole um, and it's still attached. That's fine. Um, in fact, I quite like that. Because then when I put the um, the metal sort of spear in, that will just give us a little bit of extra coverage. That's fine. So we'll check those out. Any more to be done. This one here. Again, if we do these. Preparing uh, figures is one of the most... Oh, for me anyway, the one of the most annoying features, but I'd still rather be doing this than gluing plastic figures together, if I'm honest. As I say, in a drip with a Dremel or a similar multi-tool, you can go through this fairly quickly and just go careful as you're doing it. That's fine, that's done that one. Put those to the side, keep going. I won't I won't bore you with doing all of these because I think you can get the general idea. 
Here we go. Perfect. We'll come back and finish the rest of those off. The only other thing I wanted to show you was the, the shields. Um, and again, a similar kind of thing with the shields. We want to go around the edges and make sure that any casting uh, residue is taken off. And I've got two different types of shields here. I've got what I would call the Italianite, uh, the more, more Italian style shield, um, and the Greek hoplon. And we'll be painting both of those um, a little bit later on in this video. Um, because these are going to be Etruscans, um, I'm going to have 20, a unit of 24, um, 16 of which will be armed with spears, uh, the dory, and they will be sat as wings of, of the unit um, in two groups of four. Sorry, in uh, two groups of eight, uh, and then there'll be an eight set, uh, an eight uh, man sort of central section using this sort of heavy throwing weapon style <clears throat> armament that Etruscans are believed to have pioneered um, in terms of the later development becoming the the Roman pilum. Um, I think the jury's out on whether it was the Etruscans or the Samnites, but what we're going to do is take these off. Like this. I'm not a big fan of uh, cast weapons, if I'm honest, because they do tend to um, sort of bend and uh, it's harder to get a, a decent result with them. But again, the same rules apply. Let's try and get all of the extra casting. overrun or residue, whatever you want to call it, removed. I'm going to try and make this uh, fairly flat. Sometimes I'll use uh, a flatter set of pliers. But again, I'll repeat the same process on the others. I'm also going to try uh, making a few of the Pelham style weapons with some metal spears that I'll show you a bit later on. But I just wanted to say that when, when you're preparing these metal figures, excuse me, just wanted to say that when you're preparing these metal figures, you need to make sure that we get all of the elements of the figures uh, nicely cleaned off and prepped. The next stage, for me anyway, is to take these and give them a wash uh, in some soapy water. So I'll transfer um, to a sink and I'll show you how I do that. The reason I do that after sort of uh, filing off is basically because we're going to put our fingers all over the models. We're going to put our natural sort of oils uh, onto the figures. And really we don't want that to be there when we're painting. So for me, I file all the figures first. I get them ready for painting as it were, and certainly ready for gluing. Then I give them uh, a wash off to remove any of the casting residue or the rele mold release and then we actually get on with the painting itself but uh, yep that was just the start for 10 i'll nip off and uh, set up in front of a, a sink and we'll show you how you do the rest of it hello welcome we're going to move on to the next stage of prepping the figures i've relocated to a utility room with a, a nice sink I'm going to show you just a couple of ways uh, that I prep the figures. So over here, I've got our nicely filed miniatures. A good tip for you is to check that you've done a good enough job. Just run your fingers over the surface. You shouldn't really find any sort of snags or parts uh, of irritation. If you do think you found a bit of a snag, just revisit the uh, the filing and remove it. You, you'll soon know whether you've got anything, uh, you've missed anything. And it's not uncommon for me to, to just repeat this a couple of times just to make sure that everything's good to go. So if you use this figure as an example, just that one I've pulled out, um, what I'm going to do is just run some water in the sink. And while I do that, I'm going to just put a, a little squirt of squeezy water in 
Not too much, perhaps a bit more. I tend to run it tend to run it fairly lukewarm but you want a bit of you want a bit of soap in it and what I do is I get uh, an old brush and I simply agitate the figure whilst it's in the soapy water might actually add a bit more soap And all we're trying to do here is just make sure that we get a good covering of the washing up liquid on the figure. And what I quite often do is just put all of the figures in the sink, sitting in the washing up liquid, take them out one at a time, and then if I have the tap running, rinse them off and give them enough, a nice sort of scrub off while you're while you're brushing at the same time then put them to one side move on to the next batch or the next set of figures however I thought I'd show you just an alternative approach so we'll let the water out there what I've actually got as well in the toolkit is this which is a degreaser I've had a couple of occasions when I've been really struggling to get figures properly prepped and get some of the mold release off. It happened to me on one particular manufacturer um, and then I came up with this as a solution. So this, this degreaser is uh, basically, up, I think, targeted at mechanics and such like, and uh, it will remove the built up residue um, grease etc from components now this stuff you need to use with caution uh, I always try and wear safety specs you should wear glo uh, gloves or similar to protect your hands and I pop a little bit into an old plastic tub fill up the plastic tub Then I simply transfer all of my figures I have prepped shields, weapons, the whole sheet and match goes into the degree set. So in this particular batch, there's the 24 Etruscan infantry that I, I put in there. I actually found an Etruscan um, chariot. Probably shouldn't have put my fingers in it there. I don't recommend that. Put it to the top. And I'll stick the lid on. Just in case someone gets, to, gets too near it. And I'm, what I tend to do is leave that for a minimum of three hours. You can give it a bit of an agitation if you want. But typically, if you want a really strong finish, I'm going to leave that um, for quite a few hours, possibly just even overnight. And then we'll come back and I'll show you the effect. And we'll, it, what I have, to, I have to say, the key thing is cleaning it off at the end of it, making sure you give it plenty of uh, clean water, um, to run off that degreaser and just to get the figure looking nice but it's the lazy man's way but also to be honest it's the way that I found works for me the best so um, I'll um, wait as I say probably now till tomorrow morning and um, start the video again so you can see what it's doing thanks very much hello welcome back I've just left this for a couple of hours this time around just really to show you the 
process. Um, you can see that most of the, uh, the suds, if you like, or the soapy effect has gone. What I'm now going to do is just give these a very thorough rinse. Just to remove all, that, all of the soapiness. And you'll see that some of the soap is coming back. So it's really important to give them a good old rinse off. You don't want to be touching this until you have properly uh, rinsed it off. Just to make sure you don't leave any of that degreaser on your skin. I've never had any real problems with it, but it's always best to be take precautions. And I usually do this a few times with cold water just to make sure that there are no sort of residual traces left. Sorry, hopefully that's not too bad for the, for the video. And what I quite often do is just repeat the process. Just give them a bit of a quick brush off just to make sure that we, we've cleaned them up. As I said, I gave these a couple of hours this time. I was thinking about leaving it overnight, uh, but I'm out in the morning. I didn't want them to be left too long. I think two hours is, is more than enough to have the, you know, the, the desired effect. So I'm going to carry on, I'm going to carry on uh, doing that to the rest of the models. And then once they're dry, I'll show you the next stage. Welcome back. So the figures are now dried. They're none the worse for wear uh, since we obviously cleaned them off. Just a point of clarification, the degreaser I used, I left them in there for three hours as I recommended originally, uh, basically from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. I would recommend overnight if you can, if you're going to use that method that is. Uh, but as I said earlier, it would be absolutely fine for 99% of the time with just a wash off under uh, with sorry wash off with a bit of soapy water and then making sure you give them a proper <coughs> rinse off with uh, preferably running water so what's the next stage well uh, what's appeared at the top here uh, is a etruscan chariot that i found uh, and we'll come back and show you a little bit about prepping that um, shortly but what i've got here now are a bunch of infantry guys that we need to think about in terms of their weaponry so most of these figures um apart from I think this guy here, that they need uh, a long spear. Actually, we've got two here that we don't need to worry about. So let's take those out of the mix. The others need a uh, long spear, or as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna equip them with uh, the precursor to the Roman, Roman Pelum. So let's have a little look at what I've got um, in addition to the figures. So these are some purchased wire spears uh, or steel spears these have actually got the um, spearhead modeled on the on the top there and i've also got um, these which have got a much sharper point and i'm going to use these in place of the cast uh, sort of pelum type or heavy throwing weapon types but if we start with these spears here that the, there's a variety of manufacturers that sell these to be honest, I can't give you a recommendation about these because they've been on the workbench so long, I can't tell you <laughs> where I got them. Um, but uh, but you can buy them from a number of different manufacturers. What I'm going to do now is just get a decent sort of sizing, because obviously this is this is far too large for the model. So Greek spears were about eight foot nine foot tall, but I also want to make sure that we've got enough room. Uh, when, when we're basing up the figures. So just for comparison, I've got some figures here that I did from the foundry range, and these are the Argonaut shields, but just mixed hoplite figures. So as you can see from this, we're, we're looking at this sort of 
length of spear. And if we if we sort of compare that to the figure, yeah, it's possibly a little bit on the short side, but when you're looking at it trying to equip a figure like this, we want to make sure that it looks reasonable, representative, but doesn't uh, make the base, sorry, it doesn't make basing too much of a challenge. So I'm just sort of sizing up and I think that'll look reasonable. I might give it just a little bit more. So I'm going to get a pair of clips and snip off the end. Now I'm going to give it um, a little bit of, and obviously you might want to wear specs for this, safety specs. But then if we look at what we've done with our sort of preparation and consider a figure holding a spear like this, I'm fairly comfortable that that's going to be about the right sort of length. Might want to just offer it up to a couple of the figures. Let's just look at this one. I think for this uh, particular width of uh, or diameter of spear, uh, we possibly could have got away with a 0.9 millimeter drill bit instead of uh, the one mil that I went for. But I think if you look at that, uh, I'm fairly happy that that's uh, long spear looking without being too unwieldy. Now, the spears that I showed you here are an old batch, and I've done these very plain. And I'll show you the difference when we actually come to prepping the, the spears shortly. But all I'm going to do is use that spear as the template, or the, uh, the guide as it were. And then just make sure that we cut off a few more. Put the one to one side and always use the original sort of template for this piece of work. Nope. Yep, sometimes you get a tricky bit. I'll just do a few of these so you get the general idea. There we go. Okay, so we've now done, I'll keep that to one side as my template. But now we've got three here to work on. Let's move these out of the way. So my next stage is to do a few things with these spears. Um, this is when the multi-tool comes in handy. So you'll notice that the spear itself is fairly shiny. So you can get um, a file and roughen it. And you can see that that's actually taking the shine off and we're creating a, a key for any subsequent glue. Uh, and that's fine. That will work just fine. What I tend to do is run the Dremel. And then you you want to take the spear just slowly over the surface. So obviously I'm not running the Dremel yet. This is just one of the sort of abrasive circular tools. So what you're going to do is just run all the way along like this. And that's purely to roughen up the edges. Then what we're going to do is just lose that point a little bit by just taking the edge off. Then we're going to round the end. Greek spears had a butt spike and this is the difference between this sort of simple model that I created here earlier in that I want these spears to have proper butt spikes and I'm going to put a slightly pointed but mainly rounded end just by using that natural sort of action like that and uh, using a flat surface to give us that as I say rounded but still pointy looking surface. Then what we're going to do is pick an end point and rotate around it. Now that will create a, smart, a slight depression within the spear that will make uh, it look like we've got a, a, a formed butt spike. Similarly on the front, what I'm gonna do is just rotate in this action and create more of a spear head uh, arrangement. So I'm gonna pause the video, start the Dremel, run it, see if I can um, do that in a sensible fashion, check the sort of sound.
Uh, if it's obviously too much like a dentist drill, I uh, won't show you that bit, but I'll come back as soon as it's done and we'll have a little look. Okay, I don't know what that sounds like, but we'll have a little look in a minute. But all I've done there is create a nice, just a gentle impression of it. You don't want to do too too much, otherwise that will become very weak. Uh, I might just put a little bit more sharpness to that point. And you'll notice that that's slightly off level. So we're going to get the, the pliers and just bend that slightly so that we bring that back straight. I've taken the the very edge sharpness of it. So let's just try this again. Okay, so that quick little run there. It's, it's still not sharp, sharp. It won't injure you when you're using the, the model, but that's created a nice uh, impression in terms of the spear. Now I have at times wrapped a little bit of cotton thread around the top here to make a look like binding on the spearhead, but I don't think I'm going to be too concerned in this particular case. So what's the next stage? Well, obviously we make sure that the, the, the spear will fit into a figure. Um, and this one, you just need to make sure obviously the butt spike doesn't hit into the ground. That's looking quite nice in terms of proportion. If we offer up the shield just to check out the overall look. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that, I think. Let's go back to the original one that I had. So I have added quite a bit to the overall length um, in terms of some of the previous models that I've done. But I still think um, that I'm happy with that as a template. Let's just see what that looks like compared to the other ones. Oops, that's the end bits. So yeah, these, these guys are pretty much there or thereabouts. Let's just again check this on a model. Uh, and it is surprising how often this sort of like having the spear too long will come back to cause a few problems. So I think just my own sanity, let's have a little look at what we've got here. Yeah, okay. I think you can tell that I'm questioning whether that is a little bit too long in terms of the overall impression the figures going to create. But they were, as I say, about nine foot long. So from a, a purely measurement perspective, that's absolutely fine because we've got about that much over the top. Yeah, I think, I think to be honest, I'm going to just trim a little piece off the end of this one. So I think we'll, we'll keep that one to one side. We'll just trim a little bit off this one. There we go. Uh, that's taken off that little bit there, perhaps not enough, but let's have a look and see what that looks like. So we've lost the spearhead a bit now in terms of length. How does that compare with this one? Yeah, I think. Although it doesn't seem very much, I think I'm actually happier with that 
as a size. So let's just quickly repeat the prep for this one. Sorry for that noise. Now, I'm, I'm very happy with that. You'll notice that we've created just a general impression um, of that area around the butt spike, but we've now created a nice little point. Um, we've got the just the general depression around the, the spearhead. And if I pop that figure in there, I think from a purely wargaming perspective, that's going to look uh, just as nice and actually be a little bit easier to manage on the table. So let's get this one originally. And pretty much what I'm doing is cutting off the area of the butt spike. It's fine, take that away. Do the same thing for this one. A little bit more. So please make sure you wear safety specs when you're uh, doing anything like this. Um, and we've still got my original template one. So let's just make sure that that one also reflects what we're doing. There we go. Okay. So what's the next stage? Well, we need to tidy up this one, but I'll do that one in a moment. I won't make any more Dremel noise. We've got this guy here. What's the next stage? Well, quite simply, what I do is make sure that I glue the spear into the figure. Now, there are people that use a variety of techniques here. You can use a soldering iron, uh, and that is something I'm going to give <coughs> some thought to at one point. But the most common thing I use is, is a super glue. I tend to use this Gorilla super glue because it's got a gel effect. You need to make sure you give it a good old shake. And then what I do is simply take the figure forward a little bit in terms of, sorry, take the, just get rid of this, get rid of any sort of surplus on the end. Take the figure, sorry, the, the spear out, powder the figure a little bit, put a little drop of glue where you know that it's going to go down to. And then I work it in a bit just to make sure that it's got good coverage. And then I'll leave that to dry. And just another little tip for you, if you want to make sure you can lean the figure up against another figure just while it's drying. So what I'm going to do, rather than keep you guys hanging around, is I'm going to make sure that I do the remainder of these spears, get them all glued up in the hoplite figures, and then we'll come back and deal with these. Now these are going to deal with a slightly different way, still going to use the Dremel to uh, provide a key on the, on the surface. I'm going to drop that off a little bit, but here what I'm going to do is cut them a little bit shorter. They're throwing weapons, not spears. And the general principle of a, of a throwing, the heavy throwing weapon is that you've got a point where you start to decrease the size of the spear or the shaft itself. So we're going to think about how that might work with a little bit of green putty. So I think I'm just going to create a nice 
weighted point here, uh, sorry, weighted uh, section. But we'll come back and do all that after we've glued all of these on. Join me shortly. Hello, all of the hoplite types are now glued. I just thought I'd show you um, the sort of various positions that I uh, end up gluing the figures in. And this is because, although I use the Gorilla Glue, sometimes the bond does take quite a bit of time to go off. So it's quite normal for me to leave them sort of clamped like this or um, supported by other other figures or you know anything that I've got to hand. But once once this is dry, that's that's a really good bond. That's not going anywhere in a hurry. And you know, I always recommend gluing the spears in first because then you get a good bond between the figure and the spear. I'm I'm very pleased with the way that these have gone. There's nothing that I've found which is loose or of any concern. Sometimes you do find that they don't take quite as well as you'd hope then it's just a question of removing the spear using a file to obviously remove any sort of residue of the glue and just trying again and really i can only recommend leaving it for a good sort of overnight period just to make sure that, that bond is uh, really strong and if you've got any sort of concerns that some of them are loose just start the process again but that's um that's all of the ones with the long spears done so let's put those to one side actually um move those over there what's the next stage well i'm going to try and make something that as an approximation for this heavy throwing weapon this heavy spear that perhaps bent on contact um or at least had almost armor piercing qualities really where you've got a thin heavy sorry you've got a thin point behind a heavy spear um, just remind you, this is the sort of look of the cast spear, where we've got um, a wider element here, then it thins down, uh, and and it was obviously this the spear up here. <coughs> oh, sorry, the point up here. As you've seen before, this is what I'm going to try and use as an approximation. Now, if we look at the size of that compared to the length of the, the spear, um, obviously it's considerably smaller. Um, and if I stand the figure up or try and line up against the figure, you know, generously that's maybe sort of six foot tall. Um, whereas the spear is, you know, as I say, aiming to be about eight or nine feet. So that's fine. Um, so I, I think this overall length is, is okay. What I'm actually going to do is do something a little bit different. And we're still going to do our normal job with the Dremel. And I'm still going to trim this down. Have I done that a little bit too small? I think I probably have. So I'm going to take a slightly different one, make sure that I get this properly aligned. So I don't want it to be smaller than the original. Now, what I'm thinking of doing actually is taking some of this, which is green stuff or green putty. Uh, and this is an effects of effectively an almost like an epoxy resin plaster scene. You'll get this um, from any sort of good modelling shop. Um, in, I think Games Workshop actually and people like that will sell them in the high street. And what we're going to do is take a small amount. And the idea of this is that take that bit off. Actually, I don't. We're, we're trying to take something which is roughly a 50/50 mix, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Because what we're going to do is mix this up. And I'm going to put a little bit of a, a weight uh, in roughly the same position that we see this here. Uh, and that's going to, for me, denote my uh, the designation of the heavy throwing element. So we've obviously got a very sharp point. Um, it will look like we've got a thin section here. And obviously we'll paint this uh, a metallic color, uh, whereas this will be uh, a wooden effect. And that, I think, will give us a nice looking heavy throwing weapon style uh, finish but without having this sort of problem that you get with the casting cast ones where you know quite frankly they bend very easily 
and I mean that's not a particularly attractive thing okay I've artificially done that but that will happen uh, when it's on the figure and it's really hard to to keep that straight so I'm just going to quickly prep these with the Dremel as I've shown you before um, run along it to remove uh, this sort of uh, bronzed effect and more importantly create a key then we'll mix this up put a few dots on um, and we'll go from there now the figures uh, that I'm trying to fit them to move that out of the way these ones so in, in this unit of Etruscans we've actually got <coughs> excuse me we'll actually have uh, two eight figures in total but two of them don't need a weapon uh, so we'll only we're only trying to find six so if I get six of these ready move that thin uh, that one that I think is a little bit too short out of the way uh, we've got one two three four five six so I'll just trip those, trim those off uh, matching the same length as the one that we've got there prep them up with the Dremel and uh, come back and show you the effect once we start mixing this up Just done a couple there again we just take the edge off the, the front point and we, we're creating enough of a key here for, uh, for the subsequent gluing um, I'm going to swap my Dremel out or the attachment out having bought um, a replacement um, I'll give you guys the code of that in a minute but uh, I'll stop the video finish the other four and then we'll come back Just so you know, I'm actually going to try uh, both of these. This one is a uh, 85422, and this one here is an 8193. Now, this one is sold as a grinder for metal, so I'm going to try that one first. This one is also uh, a bit more of a general purpose one, uh, but you can see the, the overall effect. The other one I had was uh, a fairly old one, and these are only a uh, sort of three or four pounds each, but they will last for a long, long time. So, a bit of an experiment because I've never used this style before, but let's have a go. Just doing the end there just to make sure that's not too sharp either. But actually that's worked quite well. Um, obviously it's a little bit fatter than the other one, but there's no you know, immediate wearing. So I think that's quite, probably the best one. Um, and just as a reminder, that was an 8193 if you want to borrow the same, or if you want to purchase the same tool. Um, but that's actually quite a good finish. So um, as I said, I'll just do the other three quickly off camera, and then we'll go on to the next stage. 
there we go all done just a tip just make sure when you're doing this if you follow the same sort of principle again where your safety specs if you keep um a section of the steel rod in contact for a long period it will get hot so that's why i tend to sort of do the end like that then keep it moving and it will cool down enough that you're not going to feel any heat transference but after all you are you know having an abrasive action against a, a metal rod and it will transfer the heat so just just bear bear that in mind if you do this yourself let's move the dremel out of the way so we're left with this this is probably a little bit big actually so i'm going to cut that down and if you haven't used this before it's a very simple process so just just imagine that you're working with plasticine so we'll take the, the plastic cover away then all we're going to do is literally squish it together and this is a, a slow acting epoxy resin effectively as i say very much like a plaster that a, a plaster seam that that goes hard and what we're trying to do is mix the blue and the yellow together to give us a nice even finish with with all of the uh all the two compounds nicely mixed Uh, not so much to see here, but as you can see, we're starting to, to blend it. And really, the best result is that it goes nice and green and even in colour. And you, you want to be sort of splitting it, stretching it out, squashing it back together. And just generally working this until it becomes this sort of finish we're getting there. There we go. And as I said, all I'm all I'm looking to do really is take one of these as a guide, and around this sort of what's that one third section from the front, just add a add a point of weight using this plasticine type material, this putty. There we go. And this this will make this will take an overnight sort of period to dry. And uh, it's a bit, a bit sort of trial and error as to how much you want to use. But again, sort of keep keep that sort of ratio in mind. And I don't know how this is going to look when I've finished. But that's that's too big so let's take that down a bit and <clears throat> if you're following the same sort of principle or the same sort of approach and it worries you about how big this is um, one of the advantages of the putty is that it will be quite happy if you want to trim it file it um, and generally do things with it after you've done this so I'm just going to get an approximation in terms of the weight and then I will be sort of filing that off a bit later but whilst that may look a little bit bulky right now that's kind of the effect that I'm after for these uh, for these spears so I'm going to carry on doing that to the remainder uh, and then show you them lined up and there we go finished six of them roughly similar sizes uh, this one's maybe a little bit big uh, but as i said i'm gonna take a look at them once they're dry maybe file them off with the round file and they'll be they'll be perfect but now i'm going to leave those overnight um, and glue them onto the figures in the morning thanks hello well it's been about 24 hours and actually my advice for leaving it overnight is probably insufficient if i'm honest we need to give it uh, a little bit more than that for this green putty. I know it looks a little bit amateur hour at the moment, but I've got three here that are uh, about the right sort of size. I've got one here that I've started to file already. Um, and all I'm gonna do is just continue that to take off some of the noticeable sort of lumps. So this green putty, 
will happily take cutting, filing. It's the same material that's used to make a figure master. Um, people just tend to refer to it as green stuff. As I said, it's an epoxy resin, sort of plasticine really. I'm going to do that one a little bit just to take the, the edge off some of the the lumpy effect that I've, I've managed to create. That's going to be fine. Maybe, maybe this one as well. Just to get more of a. I'm using the half round here to try and create that sort of profile <coughs> where it looks like it's joining down into the sort of head of the the weapon itself. There we go. So do you know what? I'm quite happy with that. So last stage is to glue this to the figures. And we're going to try and obviously compare what we did before. With the heavy throwing weapon, it's slightly forward uh, of the center point of the, sh of, the sh of the overall spear length. Um, obviously allowing for that heavier weighted head there that we can see. And if you are not happy with any of the sort of lumps and bumps, just run round and smooth them off. Off. Obviously, you can do that after gluing the figure uh, to the figure as well. I'm just trying to get an overall sort of feeling for where I want this to be, and I'll probably glue that like that and tuck <coughs> something in under here to make sure the figure stays proud. Maybe just the other figure that we're not we're not using. Yeah, something like that. I think will work really well. That leaves it to glue in the right position and we can afford to leave that overnight. So let's get the glue out. And again, I'm using a Gorilla Glue here. Loads of other choices and that noises me just giving the Gorilla Glue a shake. And I tend to glue into the hand first. Put a generous little blob. Locate the spear where I want it. Give it a, a twirl, if you like, to properly get it connected. Then put that figure back. And I'll, and I'll leave that um, overnight. Um, same kind of principle for all these other guys. Work out how they're going to hold the weapon. How we want them to sort of sit on the model. And then work out a way of balancing that as we let it dry. Again, this one's because these are sort of throwing over arm, if you like, it's going to be a similar approach, I think, to most of these, where we're just going to put something underneath the model to allow it to balance. Yeah, that's probably a better way of doing it, actually, with that one. We haven't got too many to glue. This one's obviously still got a little tag in there, which I'm happy with because that will help keep the, the weapon on the figure. So this time round, I'm putting the glue in that sort of general area. Probably a little bit too close to the center point, maybe not. Again, get something under there to hold the hold it up whilst that sets. And that'll look quite good in the morning. So I'll carry on doing the rest of them. You get the general idea. We're making sure that we've got these nice and firmly attached. And then we'll be almost ready for undercoating the actual figures themselves and actually progressing to painting. And I really will use anything that comes to hand just to make sure that we get the right finish. In terms of that overall gluing. There we go. So, yep, leave them to balance nicely while they dry, and uh, I'll start the video again when they're all fixed. Welcome back. As you can see, we're now dried, uh, the weapons are fixed in place. The last remaining step is to affix the figures to a temporary holder. I'm going to show you just a simple sort of cut piece of cardboard which will suffice to allow us to move the figure without having to touch it um, which is obviously important when we start painting 
I've actually got a block and dowel uh, set, which was made for me by um, a company called Crown Hockey. I'm not going to use it on the demo today uh, because it's probably easier to show you via the camera using this simple base. But if anyone's interested in what that is, just put a little message uh, on the video and I'll uh, give you the details. So all I'm going to do is take a little bit of white glue. Uh, I've got some sort of Gorilla PVA glue here. We're just going to put a little blob on the bottom of the base, stick the figure onto the temporary, oops, excuse me, stick the figure onto the temporary base, leave that to dry again for an hour or two. And this is purely about making sure that we can move the figure around without having to touch it when we've just painted it. I'm using a bit of white PVA because this will just pull off when we've finished and then we'll be able to use uh, a very simple sort of method for cleaning up the uh, bottom of the base just by rubbing it with our finger or, or using one of the small files. So I'm going to just do this for all of the figures that we've glued, including the original spear ones that we did. Leave them to dry. And then I'll show you the undercoat, which is the final stage of prepping the figures. See you shortly. Welcome back. So as you can see, the figures have dried. I've taken the liberty of trying to trim these a little bit more because they looked too big to me. Um, and I'm, I've decided that these particular weapons will be painted a mixture uh, of maybe dark grey or wood for this section and obviously steel here and then an ordinary wooden sort of rear portion of the, uh, the spear. What's the final stage? We've done our filing and removal of any flash. We've given the figures a wash off with um, some soapy water. We've let them dry thoroughly, obviously. We've then prepped the spears or the heavy throwing weapons, depending on the type of weapon that the figure's carrying. And we've stuck them to these little um, bases uh, that will assist with temporary handling. The very next stage uh, is just to undercoat them. Now I use a surface primer, typically black. Um, there are many different types, but the one I'm using here is, as you can see, a fairly well used one. This is a Vallejo um, surface primer. I like to keep the actual primer itself fairly wet, so I'm just going to give that a quick shake. And when I say wet, what I mean really is I like to keep it well watered down. Um, so that if there are any sort of uh, recesses in the figure, any, uh, let me just, what I'm doing off camera, just let me show you, is I'm just putting this into a little receptacle. Um, and sometimes the end gets blocked up. So let's release that. Okay. So we'll just use that amount for a minute. So I'm going to take a large brush. And this one is uh, Windsor, happens to be a Windsor and Newton. It started off life, uh, this is a size 4. It started off doing a, a better job than this, um, but as the, the brush has worn, I've started using it uh, in an undercoating capacity. Let's just take some water, make sure that this is nicely watered down. And what I'm going to do, just pick one of the figures, let's pick one of these and just roughly run over the surface. Now that's probably a little bit too weak in terms of mixture. But I'll, it's no problem because what we're actually trying to do is get this into the recesses of the figure and create a key for any future painting. So not particularly chuffed with that one. So let's go and put a bit more of the undercoat in. The important bit here really is to not make it so thick that you're adding too many layers. Um, but obviously in this particular case, we don't want it so watery that it's not actually achieving the undercoat that we're looking for or that primer. Um, or that priming effect. So let's take another figure. Um, and that's probably much better in terms of the actual 
result I'm looking for. It's obviously covering the figure really quickly. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm not that concerned about the use of a spray paint. Um, I find that this is much more controllable. And if we're careful about the way that we apply with a brush, don't have too many runs. Oops, picked up. Um, you're going to end up with just as good a result uh, and you're not going to run the risk of spraying things that shouldn't be sprayed. Uh, so all I'm going to do, let's have a look at what one of these figures with the heavy throwing weapon type spear looks like. One thing I would say about this undercoating is it will occasionally reveal imperfections in the figure where you perhaps haven't filed correctly, where you uh, may not have removed a piece of flash, etc. And it's funny how quite often that appears when you put this undercoat on and you may have missed it when you've been prepping the figure. Don't worry about it. Use the file, scrape things off, um, and we'll go back and repaint it. What I'm going to do is have a little look at some of these after they've dried anyway, and just make sure that we haven't missed, as I say, any recesses uh, in the figure. And that's really it um, in terms of the prepping. What I will do <clears throat> is create another video which goes through the stages of painting these figures. Um, there'll be also be a separate one for covering uh, the shields. While we've got them here, um, what I'm going to do is just paint the backs before I do anything dramatic with them. So I'll be doing those as well, but I'll show you properly on another video how to approach painting those, and in particular how to approach hand painting some shield designs. So thanks for watching. Um, what I'll do at the end of this video is put up a picture of all of these uh, figures undercoated and prepped, ready for painting. And I say, I think the key steps are make sure you get the figure as clean as you possibly can by removing any of the unwanted casting sort of flash. If you spot a problem, deal with it, as in, you know, file it off, um, use a sharp craft knife, whatever is your preferred method. I would always, always recommend washing the figure. Uh, there are, as I say, releasing agents and mold agents on the figure. Um, sometimes handling it will also exacerbate the problem because you'll put your own natural oils uh, on the figure, all of which will get in the way of a really good paint job. As you can see, this isn't taking that long at all and shouldn't put you off. And actually, once we've done this, we can really start to paint the figure itself. And that, I find, can actually progress quite a lot quicker than the various stages of prepping the figure. But as with most things, the effort you invest at the outset uh, bears dividends later on. So enough from me on this video. I'll finish the rest of these, welcome you back, and then um, we'll set the scene for a foundation for, for future work. Thanks very much. So all the figures are now undercoated. There's a little bit of glare off of the paint, which is probably affecting the display uh, in terms of the camera view. Um, but I just thought I'd say that what we're trying to do is make sure that all of the um, Recesses of the figure are nicely coated. Um, excuse me. And if you think that it's too light, we'll just grab a brush. We'll um, pick up some of the, the paint here and just run over it again. And really, what I'm interested in, as I say, is the recess effect. So, in other words, I want to, excuse me, sorry, let me bring it into the camera. Let me just make sure we get nice dark coverage. That's it. Um, I think I'll stop the video here because the actual black undercoat is uh, quite difficult to, to render on the camera. Then we'll come back when they're fully dry uh, on the next video when we start painting. Thanks very much.